Workflows don't have to be overly complicated or look cool to be useful. Let's talk about a real business use case. Imagine a clinic drowning in patient CSVs and doctor's notes. Structured data like blood pressure hides in spreadsheets. Unstructured insights like symptom descriptions get lost in the vast text files. Manually querying both is slow and siloed. That is, until today. With N8N, we'll automate ingesting CSVs into a Supabase Postgres database and the doctor's notes into a Pinecone vector database. Then, using an AI agent, we'll be able to write unified queries like show patients over 50 with diabetes symptoms by combining the data in our structured database with the unstructured Pinecone vector database. The workflow is split into two parts, as you can see here. Part one is all about ingesting those files from Google Drive into either the Pinecone vector database that we've talked about or the Supabase PostgreSQL database. And part two of the workflow is all about interacting with that data that we've ingested into those two types of databases, the structured and the unstructured data through an AI agent. And you'll be able to communicate with the AI agent straight in the workflow by this chat trigger. Okay, so let's go through each node one by one. We'll start with the Google Drive trigger, which is what sets the first part of the workflow where the file ingested is downloaded and dropped into the databases. So when we go in here, you can see that we are connected with our own personal Google Drive account. I'm not going to go into details on how to set this up, but all you do is grab the client ID and client secret from Google API and you put that in into N8N and you can work with your Google Drive. The poll times, uh, trigger on folder. So everything else here works in conjunction. What we're saying here basically is we're going to be looking at a change involving a specific folder called N8N demos. And we're going to be watching it every minute for any files that have been created. So for this if node, all it's doing is it's going to look at the file extension of the file that triggered the workflow to start running. And then it's going to direct the workflow path based on the file extension. So if the file extension is equal to TXT, it's going to direct it to the top path where we ingest it into a pinecone vector store eventually. And then if it's equal to a CSV, it's going to direct it to the false path where it's ingested into the Supabase PostgreSQL database. We're doing this because in this case, we're only ingesting the text or the CSV file. So there's only two types of files that can be ingested. But if there's multiple formats, for example, you want to ingest PDF or anything else, you would be able to use the switch node instead, where you'll be able to define many possibilities instead of relying on an if statement to direct where your file goes, because this only provides you with two possible paths. So the third one we're looking at is the Google Drive download node, and it's configured the same between the two paths. So it's the same thing. All it's doing is it's just going to take that ID of the file that triggered the workflow to run. So you see here, it's reflect by JSON.ID, and it's going to convert that file if it needs conversion based on the file type, if it's a Google Docs type, uh, Google Drawings, Google Slides, Google Sheets, we convert it based on the type of the file. Uh, in this case, we're just doing the raw text or CSV file, so it, we don't need conversion, and it'll work for those as well. And then the fourth node is the extract from file node. All this is doing, I can show you as an example, is it's going to take that downloaded file, and then it's going to basically output the content of the file to be used in the N8N workflow. So we see here extract from CSV, extract from HTML, JSON, and for the one on the top, it's going to be extract from text file. So the last node of the CSV path is the super base node. All we're doing here is we're going to be taking that data that we extracted from the downloaded CSV file into our super base account, our super base table, uh, and I'm not going to go into specifics of how to set this up again, but all you do here is you create a new project. And in this case, I created the N8N demo project. And then for the table, you'll also create a table that fits your use case. So in this case, you can see I created a patient's table with name, age, blood pressure, cholesterol, and last visit date. And then you can grab the API key on the project settings tab 
data API. And then all you do is you come down here and then click on reveal on the service world secret. And then you can use that to connect to your Superbase account. So the operation is create resources row and the table name again is patient as we saw here. So on the table, we have a table called patients. So for the text file path, we also have an edit fields node. And what this node does, it's, it's going to get that content of the text file from extract from file one. And then it's going to input that as json.data here. And then it's also going to add in a namespace called patients. And what namespaces are, they're basically just like categories for your data to sit in because vector databases are not like traditional databases, but they do need some kind of categorization. And that's where namespaces come in. For the Pinecone vector store node, this is where we ingest that data into our vector database. So when we click into it, we've been connected to a credential and there is a free tier available. So I recommend that you sign up and get one. Operation mode is insert documents from list, PyCon index of test, which is what we've set up here. And then the namespace, json.namespace is just what we've set in the previous edit fields node. You see your namespace is equal to patients. So we're just bringing that over in our PyCon vector store node. Embeddings, we're going to be using text embedding three small, which is what has been set on this index as well. Uh, data loader. This is where we actually define the body of the data, json.data, which is going to be the text of the document, as you see here from the edit fields node, data string, json.data. And the recursive character text splitter is just something that splits the text into chunks before being ingested into the vector database. So we don't really need to worry about it in this case. And then our final node is the Gmail node, which just sends out an email to my own email saying that the file was uploaded successfully, just to let us know that there was a file that was dropped and it has indeed been ingested successfully. And then the second part of the workflow is relatively simple. It has a open chat trigger, which if you're familiar with NADN, sort of acts as an interface to chat with the agent. And then the actual agent itself has the open AI chat model. Uh, we're using GPT 4.1 mini in this case, and then the memory window buffer memory, which is the, just a standard memory that allows it to do the, the basic minimum. And then the tools, it has access to the Superbase account. So it's going to be looking at the patients table here. And then it's also going to have access to the Pinecone vector store. And you can see here, we have defined the index to be test and we're using the patients namespace. And embeddings is just the same thing as we saw initially uh, we needed to retrieve information as well. Okay, since the workflow is running already, so you see here it's been put to active, let's look at the files that we're going to be ingesting. So let's first look at NADM patients.txt, which is meant to simulate what doctor's notes will look like. So we have information about John Doe, patient symptoms, medication, and then we also have a CSV file, which would be where the structure data about all these different patients would be. So I'm just going to go to the NADN demos folder and then I'm going to drop in patients.csv. So that's been dropped in. Then hopefully we see it executing. Okay, we don't need to worry about that error. Okay, and uh, the workflow did run. So you see here um, 22nd April at this time, it has succeeded and the file was sent through and the email was sent through as well. So We'll see in our database that the data has been ingested, John Doe, Jane Smith, and Alex Lee. So if I can just go back to my editor and let's chat with our agent, we'll open chat, and then we'll say, give me patients over 50 with symptoms of diabetes. So it's able to see now because we have data in our super base database, the patients over 50 are John Doe and Alex Lee. But because we don't have any supplemental information, we don't know which of these patients have symptoms of diabetes. So let's fix that. Let's actually go back to our Google Drive and then we'll drop in n8 and patients.txt. 
Okay, so in the executions tab, we can see that the file ingestion has completed successfully on the top text file path and the pinecone vector store node did run. And in our vector store, we see that the patient's namespace now has one number of record. So that tells us that that did indeed run correctly. And then we're going to back go back and then we're going to go back to our editor. Uh, we're going to open up this chat, refresh this. We're going to open up and then we're going to go back to our editor and then we're going to open up this chat, open chat. And then we're going to type in the same message. Give me patients over fifth only with symptoms of diabetes. So we'll put that in and then you see the agent is working through both types of databases. And then it tells us that there is only one patient over 50 with symptoms of diabetes. So patient named John Doe. And it also tells us symptoms, diagnosis, medication, and follow-up. Cool. And that's essentially how you'd be able to query both your structured and unstructured data only using natural language. And if you enjoyed that video, please consider subscribing, leaving a comment, liking the video. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.